contains bread. It was to show us what yeast we have made of God's gift. Receiving a gift does not mean that we're going to use it wisely. But we have the gift. But we want to have the gift. And the world can be reflect the use of that gift. In the Merchant of Venice, Shakespeare put these words into the mouth of Portia. <laughs> if the Jew were as easy as to know what was good to do, chapels had been churches, and four main cottages, princes, palaces. It is a good device who follows his own instructions. I can easily teach 20 what was good to be done than to be one of the 20 to follow my own teaching. And so you and I have been given a gift. To that you have been put. In a book written in the first century, written at the time of our gospel, called the Hermetic. And this is a translation by Walter Scott. It's a wonderful series of four volumes. And in this he said, there are two gifts that God has given to man alone and to no other mortal creature. And these two gifts are mind and speech. And the gifts of mind and speech are essential and identical with immortality. If they are used, man will not differ in any respect from the immortal. And when he puts the bomb, these two will be his guides, and they will lead him into the troop of the gods, and into the self, to the king, to bliss. But he's not speaking of any outer speech. Well, you and I have had this experience, I know I have, many times. You've gone to a party. And many people you do not know, and you meet them, and the usual reason, nice to know you. What a joy to know you. Nice to meet you. And the usual cliches. And then you have drinks and your little orders, and then the party breaks up, and we all separate. And you hear someone say, you are not speak. Not a door. Not a door. Please to meet what a joy to know. In other words, they don't control whatsoever with what they were really thinking on the inside. And God sees not the outer man. He sees the inner man. It's the inner speech that is spoken in the world from the mouth. The whole vast world is but chosen inner speech. What are we saying on the inside? We may think that someone really understands you, and you'll go along believing that they understand you. One simple little thing happens, and you realize they never really heard you. Not for one moment has they really heard you. Some little disruption, and then the whole thing is over. And then they turn against you as though you were the devil, and they firmly thought that you were one who was sent. That is all in Scripture. Read the seventh chapter of the book of John and the eighth chapter of John. And some said he's a good man. And others said, no, he's leading people astray. Others say, but he's male and he has a devil. When he fed them with the loaves and the fish, all they loved him. There are things in the world. As long as they can have things and things and things, oh, he's marked. And then he tells them of something entirely different. 
that they would go through eternity. That the end would justify all the eternities through which they were passed. The end would be God. They would awaken the end, and they would awaken as God the Father. They didn't tell so the nature of the furnace. He tells them only of the end, but they would pass the furnace. And passing through their faulting, they could tell exactly what they would be doing on the inside. And we are told in the fifth of this psalm, if a man orders his conversation aright, I will show him the salvation of God. If one could only control these inner conversations, morning, noon, and night, and start them right into the dream world, he would know what world he's created. Stop for one moment and ask yourself, what am I thinking now? You're carrying on a little tiny inner speech at every moment of time. You may be in the presence of someone that the world seems important, but you don't. And inwardly, you are saying that only God hears it, what you're actually saying. I believe you have ceased the meeting and you are flattered with the contact, but inwardly, what are you saying? This is what I ask everyone to observe. Observe what you're actually doing on the inside. For that is what God says. And what you are doing on the inside, you're doing in little tiny speech movements. And they're crystallizing in the manifested world around the doctor. But if the Duke were as easy as to know what was good to do, well, we all would be seen. We all would be everything we want to be in this world. We will find it more difficult to do it than to know what to do. And so I can tell you from now to the end of time, and only practice you will do it. Just practice. And when a man looks and he sees a building that seems beyond his wildest dream of ever acquiring, and he has reasons that he does not share with anyone but his mother. He's the only one taking in his company. And she displays because she knows that he could never achieve ownership of that building. It's too big. It was far beyond her dream or even ambition. But he loves her and he shares only with her what he's doing. And he sees implying that he doesn't. But as he looks at it, he could not read the sign and not inwardly repeat it. But inwardly he is saying, it is my building, as he reads his own name on that building. And day after day, as he goes by, he reads his own name on the building, which implies that he has it. And then, out of the blue, two years later, they fail. And a stranger comes in and offers to put the money up to buy it. He has no collateral. At that day, he was owner of the building. And then conducted the most fantastically marvelous, successful business in that for many, many years. And then an offer came that offered him oh, many, many times more than he paid for it. He paid fifty thousand dollars for it of other persons' money and sold it without any capital gain for eight hundred and forty thousand dollars. There was no capital gain. All by inner speech. For you could not read something without using your lips. You don't, no one sees it. But I read something. And inwardly I am repeating what I'm reading. I saw that here on the bus. A few months ago, going to Beverly Hills. And there's a man reading a paper. And every word he read, he was forming in his lips. I could watch him. Could I have actually interpreted the motion of his lips? I could have told him exactly what he was reading. For he formed everything. But everyone is doing that. But not as obvious as he did it. 
Can you read something in English? You're actually repeating the word. But now, if the thing is all in your imagination, that's all in God's gift, only in his imagination. That was God's gift. It's translated in the Hermetic as mind. And God has given to man and man alone two gifts and to no other mortal creature. And the gifts are mind and speech. And these are like the gifts of immortality. And by these gifts, he does not differ in any respect from the immortals. And he used wisely. The whole world is his. For are we not told that the world was created by the word of God? And things that are seen were made out of things that are not seen. So here out of the nowhere, we create by inner speech and the use of what call it mind, if you will. I like the word imagination. To me, it inflames me. And I can imagine a state, any state. If I can only persuade myself of the reality of the state of action, that's the important thing. To believe in the reality of the state of action. But to know what to do is not the same as doing it. So, if to do is as easy as to know what were good to do, for then chapel and in churches and poor men's cottages, princes' palaces. And how many cities in the world follow their own instructions? And then he goes on to confess, I can easier teach twenty what was good to be done than to be one of the twenty to follow my own teaching. So I tell you, I am telling you exactly what I know from experience, whether it be the law or the prophet. But I am not telling you that everyone will apply it wisely. I am not telling you in the end there will not be a shakedown. And then there will be a separation of those who really believe it and those who only pretended to believe it. The many who came out of a traditional background, they'll return to it, and they will genuflect before a handmade cross, a handmade figure that hangs on the wall, and cross themselves for good luck. And think that the speaker who taught them in the beginning has turned into a devil. They will. Then I rejoice because these signs must come. It's part of scripture. And when they come into my world, I rejoice because the end is on them. Just when they come, and they will come, and they get thinner and thinner as they separate, moving back because they cannot go forward into the top, under the high places of the monk. And then you'll exactly who understood you, and who did not understand you. Let me now make it quite clear. You have the gift to can speak. Even if you were dumb, you can still speak. Able to speak. And you form these little speech movements within yourself. Make them conform to your wish fulfilled. Do what Robert Miller can do when he was a poor boy and had nothing but a brilliant mind, a great, great understanding of literature, but he had no money and he was tired of his poverty. And knowing how the mind worked, he constructed a sentence, if true, would imply he was no longer poor. And his sentence is a beautiful sentence. I have, not good to have, I have, a lavish, steady, dependable income, consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. That was the great Robert Millican, who was the head of Caltech, who gave us his discovery of cosmic rays. 
who when he died to leave a fortune behind to his charity. I know that the YMCA was one of them and got a fortune from him. He already settled on his sons and made them financially independent. But he had enough left over to give to his favorite charity and lived a cool, wonderful, marvelous life where everyone who met him benefited by the actual meeting with the great man. And he started off from scratch using this simple technique, using the gift of God that God gave to every person in this world. Mind and speech, whether you be a Frenchman or an American or any other nationality, you have speech and you have a mind. Instead of accepting what you've already done with that gift, you simply ignore it. You brought it into being. All this is to let the eyes speak the whole vast manifested world. As we turn from it and then reconstruct the sentence, change it. As this one of whom I spoke changed the entire pattern. He was a poor boy, the whole family poor, behind the eight ball financially, socially, and every sense of the world behind that eight ball. And he constructed a scene. And as he read the so-called method, which implied that the family owned the building, he was repeating within himself as he read it. And it took two years. He persisted. At the end of two years, the family owned it. And from then on, you couldn't stop them. And you're still, you're still growing and expanding and expanding and expanding. Because he never forgot how to apply the principle. So he was one among those that didn't come within it. He found it just as easy to do it as to know what to do. And others can find it easy to know what to do, but difficult to do it. I've seen it time and time again. So I would say to them, do you not know what you are doing to yourself? Yes, but just give me a one little moment because I'm so enjoying the feeling of getting even with them, getting even with no one. There is no one else in the world. As you are told, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no God. Read it in the 45th chapter of the book of Isaiah. I am the Lord, and beside me there is no God. Now you want the word, you say? The word is very near unto you. It is in your mouth and in your heart that you can do it. See, I set before you this day life and good, blessings and curse, death and evil. Choose life that you and your descendants may live. The whole thing is before you. You can choose death if you want it, because the word is in your tongue. It is on your mouth. It is in your heart, and you can do it now. You don't have to ask who will go up to heaven and bring it down for me, or go into the depth and bring it up for me. It is now, nearer than you know. It's in your mouth, and in your heart that you can do it now. But what would you do now? What sentence would imply that you are now what you would like to do? You know what to do. I say, it's not knowing what to do, it's the doing. Someone got the most marvelous revelation. I was there the morning that it happened. <laughs> Stop spending your thoughts, your time, and your money. Everything in life must be an investment. And I so loved it, I incorporated that thought in the chapter, The Coin of Heaven, in my book, Awakened Imagination. And she would be the first to confess, although it came through her, and it was her revelation from God to her, shared with me, and I shared it through the written for those who read it in the book. But she's the first to confess he never applied it. 
There it is, but she never applied it. She was still beyond measure. She was the medium through which the voice could come. And I can see her now rushing to the library and taking out the dictionary to get the true definition of the two words, spending and investing. To spend is to put out without hope of return, to waste. To invest is expecting a return on your equity. There must be a return on equity when you invest. While you're told, stop spending your thought, your time, and your money. Time must produce some return. It is precious. Your thought is speech. It must be actually invested, not wasted. And your money. Everything must be invested and not wasted. And she is the first to confess. I knew I never really applied it. I thought, well, now it came through, and I can go on the normal, normal way, but it doesn't work that way. If to do were as easy as to know what were good to do, what a marvelous sentence. You'll find it, you'll have the work of Shakespeare. It's in the first act, the second scene. Put on the lips of the character's portion. And how difficult for a man who teaches to follow his own instruction. And he himself confessed, I can easier teach twenty what was good to be done than to be one of the twenty to follow my own teaching. So I ask you to really apply it. Don't think for one second knowing what to do is going to do anything for you. It's the doing it that matters. So if every moment of time you know what to do, then do it. If you find yourself carrying on any negative conversation, break it. Even though it gives you pleasure, as it does many people, they find the fun in being critical. And they think they are alone and no one sees me. So what does it matter? No one sees you. The only one that matters sees you every moment of time, and that's your father. He sees in the very depths of your being, and he'll exactly what you're doing. And your world is built out of these inner conversations. So today, if you're not satisfied with the world you live, blame no one, but turn within to these two gifts and use them wisely. So here we are told to order your life according to your conversation. Then, in Ephesians, you are told, it's the fourth chapter, put off the old nature, which belongs to the former conversation, and put on the new nature. The new nature sometimes is translated the new man, and the old nature, the old man. Well, if I equate the old nature with the former conversation, I must equate the new man with the new conversation. So he identifies the inner speech with man's nature. So that what am I actually doing on the inside of myself? And I'm doing it morning, noon, and night. I can't stop it. If I stop for one moment, it isn't. You can stop it. You take it into dream and you're still talking. You're inwardly talking all moments of time. So what are you saying at every moment of time? What? Be careful what you're saying, because your whole vast world is this inner conversation pushed out. And you can change it only by changing the conversation, because the conversation is equated with your nature. So if you walk the street, or you ride the bus, or you sit alone, you are still talking every moment of time you're talking. And all you need to do to find out what you've been saying is it's your will. Your will reflects this inner speech. I have seen it every moment of time. I'm not going to tell you. I have not thought it. I would not for one moment tell you that I'm always in control of the inner conversation. The phone rings. This happens. And you've told them over and over. And your reaction may not be 
quite the right one. Well, you reacted anyway. No one heard it, but you heard it. And your father heard it. And you're going to build your world based upon exactly what you've done. So you watch it morning, noon, and night. Because you're going to play this part. The end of everyone's world is Christ. Everyone is moving towards the fulfillment of being God himself. Everyone. And therefore the story of Christ as told in the Gospels, you are going to play. And when he awakes within you and unfolds within you, and you are Christ and you know you are, you're going to find those who will eagerly take all that you have to say when you give them loaves and fish. And then this is going to happen in your life. Do not think for one moment I came to bring peace upon earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. To set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law. This will happen. And then comes the context in the world, and he's accused of being a devil. He is a devil. Why do you listen to him? He is mad. But then when you, who have awakened from the dream of life, hear these things, you rejoice. Because you know your end is there. So it has to take place. To separate the sheep from the goats. And let them go back into their world. And genuflect and cross themselves for luck. And then those who can actually follow, they'll follow. For my own must come unto me. So I hope that everyone here not only listens, but believes what I have said. For I have told you what I know from experience. God himself came and come into human history in the person of Jesus Christ. In you, in me, in everyone. When he comes in you, he awakens. As you read the story, then all that is told in that story concerning Jesus Christ, you are going to experience. And so, when you tell the story to those who will readily believe it, when you feed them with the loaves of the fish based upon the law, how to get the building, how to get money, how to become famous, and all that is in love, it and then you turn. And you emphasize the end, the promise. And the promise is you will be as God. You don't need building because the world is yours. It's all within it. You don't need anything because the whole is yours. But they can't see that. They want more loads and more fish. And then something will happen because you didn't come to bring peace upon earth. You came to bring a sword to separate. The old from the new, and the conflict is on, and then suddenly eruptions will take place within family. And they'll turn completely turn against you, but you, knowing that you are the central figure of the gospel, you rejoice. You have nothing but pity for those who couldn't follow beyond a certain point. That's all that you have. No criticism, no condemnation, only pity. That they couldn't go a little bit further. But it's all part of the play. So I tell you, you watch carefully what you are saying morning, noon, and night. When you go to bed at night, just watch your inner conversation and see that the sun is not descending upon your anger. Resolve it at that very moment and then make it conform to your wish fulfilled. And make that wish fulfilled a thing of love. What would it be like if it were true? Just what would it be like? And then carry on a conversation from the premise of the wish fulfilled, all clothed in love for anyone that you think of. And watch how things happen in your world. Your night, may I tell you, if that is your last thought, it will dominate the dream of the night. It will completely dominate it. And your father is speaking to you constantly through the medium of dreams and through the medium of vision. And you'll see the whole thing unfolding within you. 
and you will know that you are the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't go out and cream it from the house top. You know it. And you walk in the comfort of being the awakened man who is God. Everyone say exactly what he wants to say about you and pay no attention to it because they have to do it. When you come down to the end, they have to do it. The separation must take place. And you don't justify it. Self-justification is the voice of hell. So you don't justify anything. And you don't try to always be right. Another almost incurable disease of man is the necessity of always being right. So you don't make any effort to prove that you are right. You know what you've experienced, and you can't deny the experience, so you go your way, telling it just as it comes to you. And it comes through in the most glorious manner. It's always scripture. So when you come to the end, you aren't disappointed, and you aren't surprised that those that you sent off alive and free would now take up arms against you and call you insane and call you a devil that would disrupt their family life. You know exactly what you've done. You've only told the truth. And when the truth comes into the world, it comes not to bring peace but a sword. It's going to separate you from that traditional background that enslaved you in the past. Because real progress in this world, religious progress, is a gradual transition from a God of tradition to a God of experience. You experience God. And the whole thing reflects it. His son told you, Father, and there is no uncertainty as to who he is and who you are. And your whole memory returns. And here you stand before your everlasting son. And he knows it, and you know it, and no person in the world could in any way dissuade you from knowing this. You've experienced it. You can't deny it. So I'm telling you what's in store for you. Use the gift wisely. Start now to use it. For if you use it, you're told, I will show you the salvation of God. Read it in the very last verse of the 50th Psalm. They translate the word conversation, manner of life, and some the way of life. But in the King James Version, it's always translated conversation. Thirteen times that phrase is used, and it's always conversation. You put off the former conversation, and then be renewed in the spirit of your mind. If you put it off, it's equated with the old man. Now, as I put it off, I have to replace it with something, a new conversation. So you're told in the book of Joel, let the weak say, I am strong. You read that in the third chapter, the tenth verse. Let the weak say, I am strong. For there is no other God. I am the Lord. And besides me, there is no God. And so I set before you, and you make the choice. You can choose life, or you can choose death. You can choose the good, or choose the evil. A blessing, or a curse. It's entirely up to man to choose anything. And look into this manifested world, and you'll see what we have chosen. But every morning, you see headlines. Nothing but disaster. You see what man has chosen. He seems either to want it or he's fed it, one or the other. Either the editorial scholars think we need that in order to sell papers. Or else we ourselves are demanding it from him. But you feed upon it. And morning, noon, and night, we feast upon all this unloveliness and carry on these little internal mental conversations with ourselves. But they don't remain there. And balloon and objectify themselves and become solidified as our manifested world. So this whole manifested world goes to show us what use or misuse we have made of God's gift. And God's gift is your mind and your speech. 
and it's not your outer speech, for we know how deceptive that is. You see, at morning, noon, and night, a salesman goes in, and he is trained to deceive the buyer. The advertising is trained to deceive the buyer. And everything is on the outside. God sees only the inside. Man sees the outer appearance, and God sees the inner man. So when you watch your inner conversation, you're actually watching the new nature, that is your nature. And if you don't like it, change it. And to put off the old man, and then put on the new man. And he will show you the salvation of God. Then the whole thing will unfold within you. I tell you from my own experience, before the promise was realized in me. Inwardly, I had this conversation with my brother. Formerly, I would argue mentally. We were 5,000 miles apart. And I needed money at that time. And when I found myself arguing with him, I broke through that entire record up. Whether he sent me a nickel or not, I loved him and praised him and thanked him. I went about my business not knowing where the next was coming from. For I had spent a fortune by taking off one solid year and living at the same level that I lived in previous years. And spent money like water. Then came that moment, I needed money. And then inwardly I carried on the conversation with him. And I said, that's a stupid thing to do. And I broke that record. Mentally. And then I carried on the most glorious conversation with him. That two lovers. As I do love him. And he loves me. And I changed that old man into the new man by changing my conversation with him. Do you know, in no time flash, unasked, a very large, wonderful check came to me. No restraint. I didn't appeal at all. I was taking it out on the one I loved because I myself had spent money like a drunken sailor. And then here inwardly, I am arguing with my brother. And when I broke it, and actually carry on the most loving conversation with him, all about the family life and all these mar marvelous things, suddenly out of nowhere came a very large, wonderful check. And I didn't appeal for it. So I'm telling you from experience, I know it works this way. Yet, if you're in the mood to argue, you so love the argument, cost you nothing, and so you're having the time of your life. But it doesn't stop there. It's going to balloon and crystallize and manifest itself in your world. So watch it. And do you know it becomes a pleasant thing after a while to actually carry on lovely conversations? It becomes very pleasant. If you're honest with yourself, you would say just what this darling of mine said to me. I never practiced it. It came through, and I recorded it, and you used it, but I personally never practiced it. Till inwardly, I carried on the same old conversation that I always did. So I say to you now, as we're going up towards the end, believe me, I would not deceive you. I have told you exactly what happened to me as to the promise. I have told you exactly what I have proven as to the law. It will not fail you. You can take the law and put it into practice now. Don't wait until tomorrow. Put it in now. I know that if you carry on these conversations, the promise of the 50th Psalm, will take Paul. He will show you the salvation of God. And the salvation of God is simply you awaken as God. That's how he showed it to you. He came and he comes into human history in the person of Jesus Christ. And there's only one Jesus Christ. So when it happens, you are Jesus Christ.
you don't change your name. You're still Mary. You're still Stan. You're still John. But when it happens, you know who you are. You don't go and ask the judge to change your name to Jesus. You walk the feet still standing, still Mary, still Neville. But you know who you are. And then when things do happen, because you know who you are, these things have to happen. They must accuse you of being insane. They must accuse you of being deceitful and leading people astray. It's all part of scripture. But you are not amazed. You only have pity and mercy for those who could not go further than they are. And then they fall by the wayside. These are the four on which the seed falls. The highway, among the thorns, among the rocks, and then on good soil. And you can't help it. You can only scatter the seed and let it fall where it will. And it will fall on these four kinds of soil. Always falls on four. And as it falls on the good, it will simply rise within them and they will have the identical experience that you have had. When it falls on the highway, it. other ideas devour it. If it falls among the thorns, the cares of the world encroach upon it and choke it. It falls on the rock and the rock is not prepared to let the root go too deep and so the sun's caught it. And then suddenly something comes up and it's all gone. But when the soil has been prepared, it goes deep and it bears a hundredfold. So I tell you, the whole story is all about you. And one day you will know, actually know, you are the Lord Jesus Christ. And you cannot avoid the story. It will happen to you too. Don't think for one moment you're going to awaken knowing you are the Lord Jesus Christ and not have those to whom you poured out your soul, who took the loaves and the fish, turn upon you and accuse you of being mad and therefore an evil one and not anything to be, to be done with you. Turn from you completely. You'll find it. But then being conscious of the fact that you have experienced the entire story, you can only go back to the written word of God and know it had to happen. It just had to happen. And when these signs come, the end is not far. Now let us go into silence.